Hey guys. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to make these essential oil burners that can also be used as a candle burner um, instead of the essential oils. Um, I'm going to make them in a closed form on the wheel. This particular one was, um, it did not have a bottom, so it's a two piece. But let's get started on making the closed forms and let's go. So I'm starting with a simple cylinder with about approximately a pound and a half of clay because I want these to be really thick to um, contain the heat from the candle burning. And now that I have the thick cylinder pretty much pulled, I'm starting to collar in the top portion. And I'm doing that by like pinching my fingers and pushing in and also pulling up that wall, which is a little hard to explain, but you can see in the, in the clip here how I'm just pushing in, pulling up a little bit um, so I can get that to combine like that. Okay, so now I'm starting to push that top down. Now that it's combined, it's pretty thick. It's got enough clay there that I can manipulate manipulate the top in a downward motion. Um, but keep in mind, I didn't. I forgot to punch holes with a needle tool. So that's what I'm doing right now, and that will help the air inside escape which will make it easier for you to push down like that. Otherwise, it's like a big air bubble inside. So I pushed it down and now I'm using my rib to kind of mess with the sides. And I'm using a lot of force while pushing inward, which, which pushes the piece like back up and kind of makes like a little bit of a wall at the top, like a slight little bowl shape at the top to hold the liquid or the candle. So now I'm just cleaning up the sides here and you know what getting the water out of the little bowl shape at the top um, and then I'm gonna put a foot on it with a foot ring tool that I have and then I'll start the next one. Now on this one, I'm it's I'm actually like pulling pulling up right there on the side. So it's it's weird because I can't put my hand in the pot, but I can pull kind of from the outside, pushing in in upward motion. So I'm kind of making a rim on the top where the little bowl section is. And then I'm using my my rib there to kind of shape it and play with it. There's all kinds of shapes that you can play with. Like these are very basic, um, you know, but I, I guess it would be fun actually to uh, to play around with different shapes. But now I'm just putting the foot ring on it and then I will start the next one.
So there I am collaring it in. Now I'm using my fingers to collar it in more. I'm also, I'm, it looks like I'm throwing almost like a bottle um, on this one. And I'm just gonna pinch the top right off and then do it again and meander the, the piece back inwards and then pressing the bottom, I'm sorry, the top down. And I'm poking three holes um, with the needle tool to let the air out so I can mold this into what I want it to be. The wooden rib is actually really good for this project in conjunction with the red rib at the end for shaping. This one's actually smaller. It was like a pound of clay and I'm not doing the foot ring tool that I have. I'm just making it a little bit different than the others because it's gonna be a lot smaller than the other two. So this is the last one. I'm gonna set them off to dry and come back in the morning to um, cut the opening and the front of the piece to get the, where the candle will go in. So for this one, I'm just using a circular cookie cutter and I'm pushing it in. I take it out to dip it in water again and then it just makes it better and twisting it to, it makes it easier to come out. So I got that opened up and now I'm just using my needle tool to clean it up a little bit, the edge of it. And now I'm just smoothing it out with a sponge. So nothing fancy there, just a lot of smoothing. For this one, I drew with a marker, just like a cool little design opening and now I'm tracing it with my needle tool and then using the X-Acto knife to cut through, you know, gently, easily. Um, the needle tool is good to use in the beginning before you actually cut into it. So that's what I'm doing here. Now I'm just cleaning up that cut with the edge of the needle tool. The clay is the perfect consistency right now. It's like perfect, maybe even a little soft leather hard. So it's it's the perfect um, consistency to, you know, smooth everything out and make a nice even cut. Um, so yeah. So now I'm just smoothing it out with the sponge and my finger, I wet my finger and um, use my fingertip to smooth it out and I make sure to get inside as well um, to, get <clears throat> to get any uh, rough edges that could be sharp later. So that's what I'm gonna finish up doing here before the next and the final one. Okay, so the final one here, I just have a bare, it's a bare cookie cutter, but it, it was too big for the piece. So I just kind of lightly pressed it against this and then followed the line and kind of cut its legs off, which is fine. You can still tell it's a bear. Um, this one was like such a pain. Um, it was like the worst cut in the world, but... 
I was able to smooth it all out. It took, just took me a lot longer, um, but I did a very not so good job cutting it, cutting that thing out. <laughs> You'll see what I mean. And side note, be careful when you're cutting not to cut close to where that bowl will come down on the interior of the piece. So you notice like my design is probably like a good inch below the rim. The pieces are very thick. I threw them thick. Um, so as you can see, it's a mess in there, but that's okay. The clay is at a good enough consistency that I can mess with it for a while. And I'm telling you that needle tool is like amazing for smoothing, uh, smoothing things out. If you just use the side of it like that. So that's what I'm going to do here is finish up and then show you what they look like all dried, um, not fired yet, but you know, the next day. Now they're ready to dry. I'll clean them up a bit more once they're a little more hard. I'm digging that bear, really cool. This is just the circle one. And then this one, which I did do the um, tea light tests. And it works great. I know it'll shrink a bit, but I measured it out and, um, and it's perfect. So. Actually, <clears throat> I didn't like the way that this one looked. So I just put a carving into it real quick. Just to make it not look so boring and ugly. It's kind of cool. So it looks like a sun. It's like psh, psh, with its like rays or wispies. Okay. So here's one that's already finished. It really works amazing. I absolutely love these. Now for the glaze combination. This is three times Chun Plum by Amico. They're all Amico glazes. So it's all over three times Chun Plum. And then on top of the Chun Plum is three times of Lustrous Jade. And then what I did was on the rim, I did a very heavy glob, like globs, like I didn't paint it on. I literally took clumps of glaze and just dabbed it on the rim, like all like clumpy around the rim of aventurine. So I did that here all the way around. And then above that right here, I did globby, um, like a globby coat, I guess you could call it, of oatmeal. And then I just kind of let it all drip down. So here's what it looks like on the top. And then here's what it looks like here. I'll just take this off. I love those striations from the aventurine. 
trying to get a close up for you. And then for the little, um, for the little uh, coaster, I just <clears throat> used a cookie cutter to like stamp out a circle. And then I just did some carving and I went light on this. I did two coats of the Chun Plum and then two coats of the Lustrous Jade because if you do any more coats, it's gonna fill in the uh, texture. So I just did two and two on that. And this is obviously a two-piece thrown uh, candle burner slash oil burner. Um, but yeah, so I like how that came out. It's one of my favorite, favorite like trippy, grip, trippy, drippy glaze combos. So there you have it. <laughs>